there is a strange signal coming from the edge of our solar system. For nearly five months, Voyager 1 went completely silent. No data, just nothing. The spacecraft that had traveled farther than any human-made object in history, the probe that had crossed into interstellar space itself, had seemingly vanished into the void. Then, something extraordinary happened. Voyager 1 came back online, and what it detected in those silent months would change everything we thought we knew about the boundary between our solar system and the rest of the universe. Voyager 1 launched on September 5th from Cape Canaveral, Florida. It wasn't supposed to last this long. The mission was designed to study Jupiter and Saturn over four years. Maybe five if they were lucky. That was 47 years ago. Today, Voyager 1 sits more than 15 billion miles from Earth. That's 165 astronomical units. To put that in perspective, Light itself takes over 23 hours to travel from the spacecraft to our planet. The probe crossed the heliopause on August 25th, 2012, becoming the first human-made object to enter interstellar space. It left behind the bubble of charged particles and magnetic fields created by our Sun and ventured into a realm where the influence of other stars dominates. Since then, it's been sending back data about this dark, cold region between the stars. But on November 14th, 2023, something went wrong. The signal from Voyager 1 suddenly became meaningless. Engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory watched their screens as the spacecraft began transmitting only random sequences of binary data. Ones and zeros with no structure, no information, no science. The problem was isolated to the flight data system or FDS. This is the computer responsible for packaging scientific and engineering data before transmission to Earth. One of its memory chips had become corrupted. For a spacecraft with just 69.63 kilobytes of memory total, this was catastrophic. The team faced an impossible choice. They could try to fix the corruption remotely, sending commands across 15 billion miles of space waiting 45 hours for each attempt to be confirmed. Or they could accept that Voyager 1's mission had finally ended after nearly half a century. They chose to fight. On April 18, 2024, engineers began the most delicate operation in the spacecraft's history. They would reallocate the corrupted code to other sections of Voyager's memory, sections that hadn't been touched in decades. Every command took 22.5 hours to reach the probe. Another 22.5 hours to receive confirmation. Two days later, on April 20th, Voyager 1 responded. The spacecraft was alive. Now, here's what makes this recovery so significant. During those five months of silence, Voyager 1 continued recording data. Its instruments never stopped measuring. The magnetometer tracked magnetic fields, the plasma wave subsystem monitored oscillations in the surrounding medium. The cosmic ray telescope counted high-energy particles from distant supernovae. All of it was stored internally, waiting. When communication was restored, that data began flowing back to Earth, and it contained something unexpected. Voyager 1 had detected a consistent, steady hum in interstellar space a signal at approximately 3 kHz that remained remarkably stable for nearly three years. This wasn't the first time Voyager had picked up sounds from beyond the heliopause. Back in 2012 and 2013, the plasma wave instrument detected oscillations caused by coronal mass ejections from the Sun, shock waves that rippled through interstellar space like stones thrown into a pond, but this was different. This hum was constant, persistent, and far more stable than anything previously recorded. So what was it? The leading hypothesis involves plasma waves. Interstellar space isn't truly empty. It's filled with ionized gas, electrons and protons drifting between the stars at densities so low they would qualify as a vacuum by any terrestrial standard. 
But even at those densities, the plasma can oscillate. It can vibrate at specific frequencies, creating electromagnetic waves that Voyager's instruments can detect. The spacecraft converts these waves into audio frequencies that human ears can process. What we hear as a hum is actually the voice of interstellar space itself. But here's the strange part. The hum's consistency is unusual. Plasma oscillations typically vary with changes in density, magnetic field strength, and the arrival of solar wind disturbances. Yet, this signal remained nearly identical even as Voyager 1 traveled another billion miles through interstellar space. Some scientists believe the hum indicates a previously unknown source of energy in the interstellar medium, something generating or sustaining these plasma waves across vast distances. Then there's the density anomaly. When Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause in November 2018, its instruments measured the particle density of interstellar space at 0.039 particles per cubic centimeter, almost exactly matching theoretical predictions. But as Voyager 2 traveled deeper into interstellar space, something unexpected happened. At a distance of 124.2 astronomical units from the Sun, the density jumped to 0.12 particles per cubic centimeter. The density was increasing. This shouldn't be possible. Interstellar space should be relatively uniform at these scales. There's no known mechanism that would cause such a dramatic increase over such a short distance. The explanation involves the collision zone between two types of plasma. Solar plasma, the stream of charged particles blown out by our sun, collides with interstellar plasma at the heliopause. This creates a compression zone, like a traffic jam of subatomic particles. But the magnitude of this compression was far greater than models predicted, 10 times greater in some measurements. Where is this extra density coming from? What if the interstellar medium itself is more complex, more structured than we imagined? We've seen similar phenomena closer to home. Jupiter's moon Ganymede produces electromagnetic emissions called chorus waves. These coherent waves create auroras in the moon's thin atmosphere and generate sounds when converted to audio frequencies. Mars, too, has its mysteries. NASA's Perseverance rover recorded the sound of its wheels rolling across the Martian surface in 2021. Along with the expected grinding of metal on rock, the recording contained an unidentified high-pitched scratching noise. No one knows what caused it. But interstellar space is different. This isn't a planetary magnetosphere or a thin atmosphere. This is the medium between stars, the baseline condition of our galaxy, and it's singing. The local bubble adds another layer of complexity. Our solar system sits near the center of a cavity in space, approximately 1,000 light years across. This bubble was carved out by supernova explosions roughly 14 million years ago. Those explosions pushed interstellar gas outward, creating a low-density void with our sun at its heart. Scientists at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics mapped this structure in 2022. They discovered that the bubble continues expanding at about 4 miles per second, and new stars are forming along its dense outer shell. The Voyagers are now measuring the interior of this bubble, this cosmic safe haven that has shielded Earth from dense interstellar clouds for millions of years. What they're finding suggests the bubble isn't as empty as we thought. The heliopause itself turned out to be nothing like scientists expected. Before Voyager 1 crossed it, the prevailing theory was that solar wind would gradually weaken with distance, fading smoothly into the interstellar medium. Instead, the boundary is sharp. Sudden. On August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 recorded a 1,000-fold drop in solar wind particles and a 9% increase in galactic cosmic rays, all within a single day. The solar wind doesn't fade, it hits a wall. This wall isn't static. Data from both Voyagers revealed that the heliopause moves, distorted by massive waves that can reach 10 astronomical units in height. That's 930 million miles. 10 times the distance from Earth to the Sun, the heliopause expanded and contracted rapidly between 2012 and 2018, which may explain why Voyager 2 crossed it six years after Voyager 1 despite traveling a similar distance. These dynamics contradict existing models of how stellar winds interact with the interstellar medium. 
The temperature near the heliopause presents another puzzle. Theory predicted that slowing solar particles would compress and heat up as they encountered interstellar resistance, creating a hot, dense boundary layer. The heating occurred, but the temperature and density were 10 times lower than predicted. Where did that energy go? The interstellar magnetic field offers a clue. Voyager measurements showed it's two to three times stronger than previous estimates. That means interstellar particles exert 10 times more pressure on the heliosphere than expected. Our solar system's protective bubble is being compressed from the outside. Voyager 1 is currently heading toward the constellation Ophiuchus. It will pass within 1.7 light-years of a dim star called AC plus 79, 3,888, the constellation Ursa Minor. Voyager 2, traveling in a different direction, will approach within 1.7 light-years of the star, Ross 248, about 40,000 years. But those encounters are still within what we consider the solar system's true boundary, the Oort Cloud, a hypothetical sphere of icy bodies that surrounds our Sun, extends as far as 100,000 astronomical units from the center. Voyager 1 will take approximately 300 years to reach the inner edge of this cloud, another 30,000 years to traverse it completely. Only then will it truly leave the Sun's gravitational influence. The spacecraft carries a golden record a 12-inch gold-plated copper disc containing 115 analog-encoded photographs, greetings in 55 languages, and 90 minutes of music ranging from Bach to Chuck Berry. It includes spoken messages from then-President Jimmy Carter and then-UN Secretary-General Kurt Waldheim. Sounds of Earth, whale songs, laughter, wind, thunder. Instructions for playing the record are etched on its surface, along with a map showing Earth's position relative to nearby pulsars. If an extraterrestrial civilization ever finds Voyager 1, they'll hear the voice of a small blue world that existed billions of years in their past. By then, we may have built new probes, faster spacecraft with more advanced instruments. A proposed interstellar probe mission in 2030 could travel 10 times farther than Voyager in the same time span. But Voyager 1 will always be first, the spacecraft's power supply is failing. Its three plutonium dioxide radioisotope thermoelectric generators lose about 4 watts each year. NASA shut down the Cosmic Ray subsystem in February 2025 to conserve energy. The low-energy charged particle instrument will be turned off soon after. Engineers estimate that with careful power management, Voyager 1 could continue operating until the early 2030s. But every year brings new challenges, new malfunctions that must be solved from 15 billion miles away. Eventually, there will come a command that receives no response. The signal will fade, the spacecraft will go dark, and Voyager 1 will drift silently through the interstellar void, a messenger from a world that may no longer exist by the time it's discovered. For now, it continues sending back data. Three instruments still function the magnetometer, the plasma wave subsystem, the low-energy charged particle detector. Each measurement adds to our understanding of this strange realm between stars. The hum persists, steady, constant, unexplained. What we know so far is that interstellar space is more complex, more dynamic than anyone imagined. The boundary of our solar system moves and shifts like a living thing. The medium beyond is denser in some places, singing with plasma waves we're only beginning to understand. Every answer Voyager sends back raises new questions, and perhaps that's exactly as it should be. Because 15 billion miles from home, in a region of space no human eyes will ever see, a tiny spacecraft built in the 1,970 seconds with less computing power than a digital watch is still making discoveries still teaching us that the universe is stranger, more wonderful than we dared to imagine. For now, all we can do is listen.